بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آور ٹوڈے سیشن از آن وکیبلری بلڈنگ ویل وکیبلری بلڈنگ از اے ویری امپورٹنٹ اینڈ سگنیفیکنٹ پارٹ آف لینگویج لرننگ بٹ بفور وی گو فار دا ڈیٹیلس آف دس سیشن آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو شیئر دا ریویو آف دا پریویس لیسن ایز فار ایز دا پریویس لیسن واز کنسرن ان دیٹ وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ریڈنگ کامپریہینشن دیٹ سیشن واز ڈیوائڈ ان ٹو ٹو پارٹس مینلی اٹ ڈیلٹ ود reading comprehension what it is how it can be defined and what is the relationship between reading and the reader in that session i also talked about the mental process of comprehension what mental capabilities are involved and how the process of comprehension takes place in our mind it was discussed Reading comprehension sessions also talked about factors affecting comprehension. I looked at it from three perspectives that is reader, text and context. I also established the importance of each of these factors in relation to the other two. While talking about reading comprehension, I also gave you a few strategies that can be helpful for developing good reading comprehension. I discussed the benefits of using these strategies in your everyday academic reading. I also discussed a very important and crucial question that was related to what if reading comprehension fails. In case of the failure of reading comprehension, how a student can cope with and how a learner or student can continue with reading to enable himself or herself to extract the maximum from a reading extract. in that situation this is what was discussed reading comprehension sessions also provided some activities and exercises to improve the reading comprehension of the learners i hope that would have been of some help for you and i'm sure you would do some more practice on that with this we move on to today's session that is also very important in relation to reading comprehension as well as all other reading skills overall today's session is as i have already said on vocabulary building in today's session i will cover the following aspects what is vocabulary what is vocabulary building vocabulary building and our linguistic context i would also talk about the importance of vocabulary building in language learning with this i would move on to teaching learning vocabulary issues and their place in our curriculum i would definitely share a few strategies or tips with you with reference to vocabulary building so i would talk about how to build vocabulary especially the use of prefixes and suffixes in vocabulary building will be a part of today's session since vocabulary building is a very vast area it cannot be covered in one session the topic of vocabulary building is divided into two parts today's session deals with as i have said the general ideas about vocabulary what it is how it can be defined what is vocabulary building what are the benefits of vocabulary building and more importantly how to build vocabulary however the major focus of today's session with reference to um the practical aspects of vocabulary building would be on the use of prefixes and suffixes for improving or developing vocabulary the rest of the areas of vocabulary building and activities related to vocabulary development would be done in the next session starting with what is vocabulary broadly defined vocabulary is knowledge of words and word meanings i would say it is your fund of words an individuals or a person's fund of words that he or she possesses or that he or she can use is known as his or her vocabulary in other words vocabulary is all the words known and used by a particular person 
this fund of vocabulary varies from person to person people may have a big fund a huge fund of vocabulary there may be learners who have a comparatively smaller a uh, limited and a restricted fund of words we also need to consider this um, issue of the size of this fund of words or vocabulary with reference to l2 in case of second language a foreign language or an international language that you learn as um, as a formal learning process your vocabulary is comparatively limited so as a learner you have to work more on improving your vocabulary or building your vocabulary in l2 or in a foreign language so as i said earlier vocabulary is about words where they come from how they change how they relate to each other and how we use them to view the world i would like you to focus for a while on this particular definition vocabulary is not only the fund of words it is about words where they come from that is the origin of the words how they change how they can take different forms how they relate to each other how they are associated with each other and how we use them them to view the world the reality of the relationship of language and world is that they are interrelated the way we live in the world affects our language and the way we use a language affects our views on the world so vocabulary that we have is very very important in that regard i would say vocabulary is the foundation of language our most effective communication tool it is one of the basics of um language learning it is one of the basic tools that are used in communication be it oral or written communication as i said earlier vocabulary is a fund of words well words like facts are difficult to remember out of context remembering is greatly facilitated when you have a body of information with which to associate either a word or a fact for words interesting origins or histories will help provide a context for example a hippopotamus is a river horse from the greek hippos meaning horse and potamus meaning river i hope you would remember the word and its meaning from now onwards so this is how sometimes interesting origin or the knowledge of the origin helps you understand the word and to retain it as a part of your vocabulary fund etymology is the study of the origin of words like all other languages in the world english language is also living and growing it is rather living and growing with a faster speed a speed that is faster than ever before maybe although many of its words have been part of english language for many years new words are added all the time which means the fund of vocabulary of the language itself is increasing every day and this happens to every language though the speed varies from language to language with reference to its use its importance in the socio cultural context of the world and its importance as a language around the globe before we move on to learning something about um what i would say vocabulary in english language i would also like you to remind yourselves of the linguistic context in which we live what about urdu how do you see the addition of words in it what about the mixing of english urdu as we all know has always been termed as lashkari zuban um language that is a collection of words that have come from different languages mainly from persian from arabic and sanskrit as well however you would have noticed as you are living through these times that urdu language is changing very speedily it is changing very rapidly especially in case of its relationship with english it is changing a lot 
a lot of english words are being used in urdu and they are gradually and slowly well maybe not very slowly rather i would say quite rapidly they are becoming a part of the vocabulary of urdu language this mixing of english and urdu is not something unique it dates back to pre partition uh, to the subcontinent as well and actually the whole um, i would say the whole um, process of the creation the birth and the evolution of urdu is almost the same where different languages have contributed at different times however in today's world english is the predominant language that is contributing towards the expansion of urdu with this we come towards vocabulary building well vocabulary vocabulary building means increasing the vocabulary adding to the fund of vocabulary vocabulary development refers to the knowledge of stored information about the meanings and pronunciations of words necessary for communication i would say the meaning of words their pronunciation when it comes to spoken discourse and of course their spellings when it comes to the written discourse knowledge of word parts can play a role in increasing our vocabularies word parts include prefixes suffixes and root words and as i have already said earlier at the outset of the session that today we would talk in detail about the use of prefixes and suffixes um to add to our vocabulary and i would share some common prefixes and suffixes that if you understand them and know them it would immensely add to the number of uh, vocabulary items that you would have in your fund because by using them by adding them before or after the word you would be able to create many words that maybe you would not have created before well importance of vocabulary building cannot be denied because as you grow up while living in the world and as you interact with the world you need to communicate more the more you need to communicate the more you need to have words the more you need to have words the more you need to build your vocabulary roughly 90% of the time self expression is done through words though sometimes we use our gestures body language um or other means of communication as well so you can't express what you want to if you do not know the words to say many people find themselves stumped when it comes to written and spoken communication because they have trouble organizing their thoughts and because the right words tend to elude them finding the most appropriate word that you need to have the word that you think you need at that particular moment this is also important with relation to vocabulary building and vocabulary usage no matter who you are a student trying to finish a term paper or a professional completing a written project or anyone else relying on the power of words to send send a message you need an expressive and comprehensive vocabulary in order to interact well and to do a good job good job in all your daily tasks and daily routines i would say most of your vocabulary development takes place through reading especially when it comes to a second language or a foreign language at this point my dear students again i would like to reiterate that um, vocabulary building and uh, use of vocabulary actually is related to all the four basic language skills that is listening speaking reading and writing because as a matter of fact all the new vocabulary that you learn most of it comes through either listening which means you listen to a new word and you register it and you learn it and then you start using it or a new word comes to you through reading where you come across a new word you try to understand it in the context once it is clear to you your brain starts using it for the writing purposes or for speaking purposes so basically listening and reading are those two skills that are related with the reception of new vocabulary 
and they play main role in developing your vocabulary whereas speaking and writing are those two language skills where you exhibit your vocabulary building or your vocabulary learning whatsoever you have learned through listening and reading you project it you show it and you exhibit it through speaking or writing however as you would have noticed i have placed this session of uh, vocabulary building this particular area of um, um study skills or communication skills under reading skills because i believe that in academic situations most of the vocabulary building for students in academic contexts takes place through reading if a student is careful if a learner is careful and observant while reading he or she would learn a lot of new words and would be able to develop his or her vocabulary to the required standards or to to the sufficient amount of words in the fund of vocabulary as i said earlier language is the key to learning a child who has limited vocabulary tends to have lots of questions there is no way of understanding the real meaning or essence of a sentence if we do not know the exact meaning of the words used in it even in mathematical problems um they become easier to understand if you have a good vocabulary you can easily translate the problem at hand and find solutions to it if you know the meaning of the words used people who have a good grasp of vocabulary are often more intelligent they are the ones who easily grasp knowledge so the more you build your vocabulary the more you increase your ability to grasp knowledge to learn to learn other things related to language and otherwise in general you need to brush up your speaking and vocabulary skills if you want to interact with interact with people so basically what i say is why we need to build vocabulary we need to build vocabulary to interact with people in a better way according to studies people prefer interacting with well spoken and well read people because they know more and they have a lot of interesting things to talk about because oral and written communication are the two means that are used to communicate with people most of the times especially oral or spoken communication is the mode that we use all the day through so the better the vocabulary you have the better you would have the ability to interact with people and of course people would also find it easy to interact with you another reason for why to build vocabulary is that build your vocabulary to increase self confidence many people admit to feeling intimidated when they are around people who speak intelligently and articulately a sort of social stigma is often applied to people who do not have the ability to clearly express themselves well my dear students at this time point i would also like to mention and i hope you would agree to that ki hamare yahan the kind of people we are the kind of um, social linguistic backgrounds we have the kind of um, environment and context in which we live hamare yahan to yu hota hai na ki the person who can speak english well and who can speak free, uh, very fluently and in a good way is considered to be all knowledgeable और किसी को चाहे कितना कुछ क्यों ना आता हो इफ ही और शी कैन नॉट एक्सप्रेस हिम सेल्फ इन इंग्लिश दैट पर्सन इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी फार लेस नॉलेजेबल देन एक्चुअली ही और शी इज आई वुड ऑल्सो से हमारे यहाँ बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स डू देयर मेट्रिकुलेशन एफ एर एफ एस सी एंड इवन बैचुलर्स from the regular stream of government institutions and who do not have the privilege to be exposed to the use of uh, english in all functional situations despite the fact that they understand when somebody says something they understand that they find it difficult to respond to that and one of the major flaws in 
um, all this process is that number one they need practice number two they need to improve their vocabulary they lack vocabulary they do not find appropriate words to express themselves और इसी वजह से बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स अपने एकेडेमिक लाइफ्स में पीछे रह जाते हैं और इवन आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग देयर एकेडेमिक लाइफ्स व्हेन दे एंटर इनटू देयर प्रोफेशनल लाइफ्स दे फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू आई वुड से कंपीट अगेंस्ट दोज पीपल हु आर मोर फ्लुएंट इन स्पीकिंग इंग्लिश और इन राइटिंग इंग्लिश so um in order to avoid that social stigma that is applied to people who do not have the ability to clearly express themselves in english in the pakistani context um, when it comes to the formal situations of academic as well as professional life i would say um this is the time for you to build your vocabulary and to have some practice in um oral and written communication both so in continuation with uh, what i was talking about building vocabulary for different purposes i would say build vocabulary to speed up progress a good vocabulary can actually speed up learning it is much easier to understand difficult sentences in academic books if you have a good vocabulary people who are well versed in many topics and the vocab have the vocabulary to talk about them look and sound more intelligent ye woh wali baat hai jo main bhi aap se keh rahi thi and they therefore stand a better chance of making progress in academics and jobs aur is bare mein to we don't have any doubts ke hamare ha um, knowing english and the ability to express yourself in english is a very very important part in fact it is an integral part um, of um, you see uh, any possibilities of making progress in academics as well as in jobs despite the significance and importance of vocabulary building with relation to the academic uh, and uh, other requirements when it comes to vocabulary building and our academic curricula um, the situation is of course uh, not very promising and i hope you would agree that most graduates from our schools and colleges are found to have a vocabulary that is often inadequate for their needs most of the time the source of this deficiency is the curriculum unfortunately the curriculum does not adequately focus on the development of a well rounded vocabulary and is also limited in the resources it offers to one to enhance theirs that is their vocabulary majority of the students who have a good command of the english language and a greater vocabulary are usually those who make their own efforts to achieve it so when i say this what i mean is unfortunately a lot of support is not provided by our academic systems throughout and this is what you would have experienced so far um through your education so to have a good command of english language and to have a greater vocabulary only those people are successful most of the times who make extra effort on these and who are conscious of these areas so this is um this is a bell of caution for you this is a time where um, you are to be reminded of this and you have to remind yourselves that you need to work on it when reading if the the students generally they come across words unfamiliar to them they go out of their way to look them up in a dictionary this is what i am talking about those students who um, make extra effort to develop their vocabulary and that is why they are successful they try to remember them and use them in their communication so not only to check the meaning of a word in a dictionary or to use some source to understand the meaning of the word is important what is more important is to try to remember it and then to use it in your communication because once you start using it it becomes a permanent part of your vocabulary fund and you do not forget that dear students on this slide i'm going to talk to you about the value of vocabulary building words are unique and interesting a limited vocabulary keeps you from expressing your real thoughts and feelings whereas a strong vocabulary gives you the right words to use at the right time the question then comes what is it that is needed for vocabulary building and the answer i would say is very simple vocabulary building takes patience and continued effort 
ये कोई जादू के जोर पे होने वाली चीज नहीं है दैट इन वन डे यू वुड डेवलप योर वोकेबलरी और यू वुड सिट फॉर अ वाइल फॉर यू सी लिसनिंग टू अ सेशन और समथिंग एंड यू वुड डेवलप योर वोकेबलरी इट्स अ कॉन्टिन्यूस कंसिस्टेंट प्रोसेस दैट इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द लर्नर योर वोकेबलरी कैन एंड शुड बी अ रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ यू योर वोकेबलरी इज यू and like you your vocabulary should be alive it should change and grow to meet your needs what i mean by this is as a child you have a very limited vocabulary but as you grow your needs for communication grow so you 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 develop your vocabulary to meet those needs so as you grow and live through your life the need for um, more vocabulary also um, um becomes important and the vocabulary if it does not grow as you grow of course then you would be on a disadvantage of not being able to express yourself in a good way vocabulary development is also a primary determ determinant of reading comprehension pichle session do jo the hamare we talked about reading comprehension we did some activities as well well vocabulary development is a very very important part of reading comprehension um if you have a good vocabulary of course your reading speed increases your ability to understand the meanings of sentences and paragraphs your ability to understand the main idea and the supporting details all this increases readers cannot understand the content of what they are reading unless they understand the meaning of the majority of the words in the text theek hai sometimes you may not understand a word or two in a sentence or in a paragraph still you would be able to comprehend the main idea or what is said in that sentence or paragraph however if you do not understand many words or the key words that are important to the uh, in relation to the i would say message then in that case your reading comprehension would be hampered it would be hindered because of your lack of vocabulary as i have earlier said it is a basic part of reading comprehension if you do not have enough words you are going to have trouble understanding what you read an occasional word may not stop you but if there are too many words you don't know comprehension will suffer the content of textbooks is often challenging enough and you do not want to work as well as on as well on understanding the words that express that content also vocabulary is a very important and major part of almost every standardized test including reading achievement tests college entrance exams armed forces and voc vocational placement tests etc vocabulary is a key measure of both one's learning and one's ability to learn the more one the more words you know the better you are likely to do on such important tests so vocabulary building is also important um, not only in general academic activities but also it is important for examination preparation because uh, in many standardized tests directly or indirectly vocabulary testing is included it is a part of that so there is a need for direct instruction of vocabulary items required for a specific test for better vocabulary development repetition and multiple exposure to vocabulary items is important students should be exposed to items that will be likely to appear in many contexts well you are independent individual distant learners in your case what you have to ensure then yourselves is that you any new word that you come across try to come across it repetitively repeatedly and in multiple um contexts multiple exposure to a particular vocabulary item helps you understand it and then to retain it maine aapse kal bhi kaha tha once you come across a word and you do not understand that clearly it's okay if you just um, have a slight idea about what it is but next time try yourself to be exposed to that word again when you come across that word in a different context it adds to your clarity 
doing this a couple of times or five seven times maybe you would be very much clear on how the word is to be used and what are different shades of meanings attached to that particular vocabulary item thus this vocabulary item would become a part of your um, vocabulary fund and you would be able to use it in your everyday um, academic and non-academic life Actually, learning in rich contexts is val valuable for vocabulary learning. Vocabulary words should be those that the learner will find useful in different contexts. When vocabulary items are derived from content learning materials, the learner will be better equipped to deal with specific reading matter in content areas. In your case, because you are um, Mm, distant learners then what you have to try to do is that in order to learn new vocabulary items you need to be focused you have to identify those items that are more related to your needs that are more useful in your contexts and then you need to make an effort to consciously understand them and retain their meanings the for example you come across a word that you think is quite irrelevant otherwise to your um, everyday life tasks or academic needs and you would hardly ever come across that kind of a word or the need for using that kind of a word again in your um, uh, future. So maybe you do not need to give that much attention and time um, to learn and to establish the, um, the contexts in which that word can be used. So it's also a game of pick and choose. Sometimes vocabulary items are found difficult to be understood. You, what you can do as a distant learner is that you can restructure them for yourself. Now how you can restructure them for yourself? That for example, if a word is used in a particular context and uh, you find it difficult to be understand, uh, understandable for you in that context, what you can do is you can refix readjust it in different other contexts to learn that and finally i would say vocabulary learning is effective when it entails active engagement in learning tasks vocabulary jaise maine pehle kaha jadoo ke zor pe you cannot increase your vocabulary you cannot be a passive learner and yet have a good vocabulary you need to be active. You need to be actively engaged in learning tasks. If you want to develop vocabulary, you would have to do a lot of reading comprehension activities and exercises. You would also have to do a lot of um, tests and quizzes and worksheets related to vocabulary development. That is the only possibility for you to develop your vocabulary, especially when it comes to English. Because otherwise you are not exposed to um, a lot of new words every day when it comes to the spoken discourse. So, as I said before, most of it comes through reading in case of English for um, Pakistani learners. Computer technology can also be used effectively to help teach and learn both, I would say, when it comes to vocabulary. So, um, sit on your computer, find out those relevant exercises that you can do. Uh, it would also help in the sense that you can um, start from the exercises that match your level of difficulty. You may start with easier ones according to your level. You may go on to difficult ones when, as and when you think you are prepared for those. Much of a student's vocabulary will have to be learned in the course of doing things other than explicit vocabulary learning. When you are not even consciously working on vocabulary exercises, when you are doing other activities, academic activities, you are reading some textbook, you are preparing notes on a particular question, you are doing a writing task, you are... Um, involved in any other kind of academic activity actually you can use that to enhance your vocabulary if you are conscious about your vocabulary development because repetition richness of context and motivation would also add to the efficacy of incidental learning of vocabulary if you would be keen if you would be a keen learner and a keen observer so automatically you would come across you would come across a new word, what you would do is 
यू वुड कॉन्शियसली लाइक टू एक्सप्लोर एंड इट एंड रिटेन इट तो आपका जो फंड वोकेबलरी है वो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता इट वुड कीप ऑन इंक्रीजिंग Well, concluding on this part, um, the theoretical part of vocabulary building, I would say that studies have indicated that students with strong vocabularies are more successful in school and that are or colleges um, for that, and that a good vocabulary is an influential factor for people who enjoy success successful careers in life. Words are the tools, not just of better reading, but of better writing, better speaking, better listening, as well as better thinking. The more words you have at your command, the more effective your communication can be, and the more influence you can have on the people around you. Especially in today's world of communication, of speedy and fast communication, a good vocabulary counts more than ever. many jobs provide services or process information and the skills of reading writing listening and speaking are essential so you see these are firstly important because of your academic requirements and secondly because especially in the case of pakistan in the socio cultural and linguistic context um this is a requirement for your career and for your future life as well with this we are moving onwards to the more practical part of the session where we would do some exercises some activities related to how to build vocabulary well the answer to the question how to build vocabulary is not very simple in fact it is very complex and very complicated different people different linguists and researchers have suggested various ways of building vocabulary In today's session we would look at word parts we would specially look at prefixes suffixes and roots and we would see how far and in what ways these can be used number 1 to build vocabulary and number 2 uh, to understand any piece of new vocabulary that comes across in your reading or listening skills or activities starting with prefixes well prefixes are word parts added at the beginning of words and they dramatically alter a word's meaning including changing a word to its opposite meaning for example correct to incorrect regard to disregard so you see by using prefixes in and dis in these cases respectively what is done is the meaning of the word is changed to completely opposite meaning we would deal with it in detail on the next slide suffixes suffixes are word parts that are added at the end of words a suffix can change a word's part of speech for example jump to jump over something jump is a verb but by adding a suffix er er at the end we make it jumper jumper is a noun in the same way poison poison is a noun poisonous is adjective poison and poisonous poisonous food for example so poisonous becomes adjective when when we add the suffix o u s whereas roots are the base part of the words they convey the bulk of a word's meaning they convey the main part of the meaning of that word so now we go into the detail of what prefixes are and how they are to be used i would also give you some activities to work on prefixes the basic word prefix itself is a combination of pre plus fix pre means before so actually the word prefix also has a prefix in it the main word the root word is fix to which a prefix is added that is pre pre means before fix means fasten or to tie up so prefix means fasten before so these are those parts of words that are fastened before or that is that are attached before or that are placed before Uh, any word and these are groups of letters or words that we place before a word or a root word to give it a different meaning a changed meaning and even sometimes an opposite meaning 
prefixes modify or extend the meanings of words and roots. Well, here I have um, at the top of the slide, if you look at, I have a list of a few prefixes for you. You might have come across these prefixes um, in combination with many words in your lives. Um, this is a quick activity to check your knowledge of prefixes and to understand how far your vocabulary is developed and how far you can use them. What is done is the dash shows where a prefix is to be attached. Then the root word, the main word is given. And after that mark of uh, is equal to um, the explanation or the meaning of the word that uh, that would be created by adding a prefix is given. For example, dash line is equal to emphasize. Ab ye jo upar red color mein words diye mein, you have to pick any of these jo yahan par fit in ho jai. Achha, one of these can be used more than once. Each one of these can be used as per requirements once or more than once in any of these uh, blanks. So, ab for example, pehle wale pe to ye the first one would fit in. Underline. Underline means to emphasize. In the same way, dash normal is equal to below normal average. Now what I want you to do is um, have your notebook in your hand and quickly try to fill these up for yourselves. You have just a few seconds time as I go through the slide you are supposed to fill along with it. Dash phone is equal to a cone shaped device held to the mouth to intensify and direct the human voice. Dash nourished is equal to not sufficiently fed. The dash rebel is equal to the main rebel. The dash fine is equal to extremely fine size or texture, very fine in quality. Dash take to go before another vehicle on the road. Dash computer, a small computer based on a microprocessor. Dash come. To beat or win a victor. Dash bread, not given enough food. Dash size, smaller than normal for its kind. Dash merge, to go under. Dash opponent, the main opponent. Dash film, a film with photographed materials in greatly reduced size. Dash estimate, to give something higher importance. Have you done this part of the exercise? If you have done, let's move forward. Here we have the activity solved for you. Check your understanding, check your vocabulary in comparison with the answers that are provided here. Underline, number two, subnormal, number three, megaphone, next, Undernourished, next Arshrebel, next Megafine, next Overtake, next Microcomputer. In the same way, Overcome, Underbred, Undersize. And then comes sub, Submerge, so, sorry this is um, a uh, typo error, submerge, arch opponent, microfilm and overestimate. How far you were successful in doing the activity, evaluate yourself. Self-evaluation or self-judgment is a very very important part of distant learning my dear students because you would not be in direct contact with the teacher throughout so most of the part of evaluation um, at every stage is to be done by yourself so you, so that you are uh, improving your study skills regularly and gradually and you are sure that whatsoever you are um, doing you are um, checking yourself on that. Here is another slide that introduces a few more um, 
prefixes that you can use and that are used actually in our daily lives. I have given the meanings of um, the words that are created by combining them for your facility so that you could understand their use and then you could use them not only in different contexts but also you could create other words by using these prefixes. So let us start this exercise again. Again I would like you to do this on your notebooks so that um, you can check this uh, how far successfully you have done it. Dash power is equal to a state powerful enough to influence events throughout the world. Dash swim is equal to travel faster through water than competitors. Dash dermic, a way of injecting drugs under a person's skin. Dash light, extremely light. Achha, you would have noticed that this page pe the words that are given they are comparatively more difficult. Yes, I have organized them in a sequence. So, the slide pe the prefixes that uh, prefixes that I gave to you, they were common. They were more. Um, they are the ones that are more commonly used, and the words that were created with them, even those words are more common in everyday use. These are on the difficulty level uh, of vocabulary. The ones that are given here on this page, they are comparatively more difficult. I've tried you, you to be taken through more um, uh, facilitating and easier tasks towards comparatively more difficult tasks. Anyhow, moving forward, um, dash class belonging to the lowest and least privileged social stratum. Dash room, a large entrance or reception room or area. Dash pathy is equal to dislike or opposite feeling. Dash scribe, draw a line around. Dash words, carry on a conversation. Dash loading is equal to self loading. Dash organization, a condition in which an orderly system has been disrupted. Dash activate is equal to remove from active military status or reassign. Dash arthritis, information involving all the tissues of a joint. Dash action, the action of dealing within or between two groups. Dash figure, mar or spoil the appearance of. And finally, dash polar, located or found around a polar region. I hope you have done this uh, part of the activity. If you have not yet finished it, take a couple of uh, more uh, minutes, I would say, to complete it before you move on to the next slide. So, here we come with the um, solved part of uh, activity. So the correct answers are superpower, outswim. I am not sure how many of you would have done it correctly. If you have done it correctly, this one, it means you really have good skills. Hypodermic, ultralight, underclass, anti-room, antipathy, Circumscribe, converse, autoloading, disorganization, and in the same way the list continues deactivate, parathritis, transaction, disfigure, circumpolar. How far you have been able to? Um, perform on this activity, check yourself and do a self-evaluation of your work. I would also like to compare the evaluation of your uh, performance on this sheet with the previous one. You thus through this comparison would be able to see um, that at what difficulty level you can deal with words and what is the point from where you need to start further working on your vocabulary. Well, before we really move forward, I want to share here a list of prefixes with you. 
um as you noticed i just clicked on the link that i have uh, this is a hyperlink that i have created so i just clicked on that and this word file opens what i have done here in this word file for you is if you look at this you would see three columns are created i have provided a list of prefixes in the leftmost column the area of their meaning or their meaning is given in the central column and then the rightmost column with the heading of examples is left blank what you are supposed to do is you would learn the prefix you would understand its area of meaning or the meaning how it is used what does it mean when it is fixed to some word at the beginning of the word and then you would try to write three words of examples for that for example ante before abhi aapne jo pichli exercise ki usme aapne kiya tha word ante room anti anti means again or opposite so anti anti corruption opposite corruption or against corruption ash main chief mm, ash bishop for example auto means self automobile hum kehte hain automatic auto start for example hum use karte hain by by means two or twice so bypass is it a correct choice bypass think about this i would talk about this one later on what about the choice bicycle compare it with tricycle tri means three circum around hum use karte hain na circumstances so situations around con co call and com all these four prefixes have the same meaning that is with or together jaise hum kehte hain co education moving on to the next one counter counter means in opposition to jaise hum use karte hain counter act to act in opposition to in reaction to counterfeit ki baat karte hain hum d d e d d means down diversing demoralize jaise hum kehte hain degenerate dis dis means negative jaise hum kehte hain disregard jaise regard se hum negative usko bana dete hain disregard interested se disinterested x e x x or e both of these mean out or from for example ex minister ex worker in the same way hyper hyper means extremely or extreme for example hypertension extreme tension ke liye hum use karte hain hypo hypo means fixing agent fitted with for example hypodermic inter inter means between or among intermediate international means between two nations inter university means between two universities or amongst more than two universities macro large macro organisms for example mega large mega mall jaise hum word use karte hain mini is small mini bar for example micro is also used for small hum microwave use karte hain miss m i s miss ab ye double s wala miss nahi hai bhai m i s miss miss means wrong or unfavorable misfortune that is unfavorable fortune misunderstanding that is wrong understanding mono mono means one jaise humne kiya tha na buy or try isi tarah se mono mono means one so um 
मोनोटोन फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक ही टोन में बोलना मल्टी मीन्स मैनी मल्टीफेसिटेड और मल्टीपर्पज मल्टी कलर ये वर्ड तो हम बहुत सारा यूज करते हैं नॉन नॉन मीन्स नो नो और नॉट नॉन प्रोफेशनल नॉन एकेडेमिक आउट आउटकास्ट जैसे हम यूज करते हैं इट मीन्स अवे ओवर ओवर मीन्स अब एट टॉप पोजिशन जैसे हम कहते हैं ओवर हेड ब्रिज फॉर एग्जाम्पल पैन ऑल योर वर्ल्ड वाइड पैन इस्लामिक वर्ल्ड वाइड इस्लामिक पोस्ट मीन्स बिहाइंड पोस्ट टॉक पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट बाद में आफ्टर डॉक्टरेट और आफ्टर ग्रेजुएशन प्री और प्रेम प्री डिसाइडेड पहले से डिसाइडेड प्री इन्फॉर्म्ड पहले से इन्फॉर्म्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्रो प्रो मीन्स फॉर बिफोर ऑन द साइड ऑफ प्रो इज ऑल्सो यूज टू सपोर्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्रो इस्लामिक री मीन्स अगेन द्वारा बैक फॉर एग्जाम्पल री इन्वेस्टिगेट री कुक री एंटर एटसेट्रा सेमी इज हाफ सेमी सर्कल हम जो यूज करते हैं सेमी कुक्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाफ कुक्ड सब एंड सब बोथ आर यूज फॉर अंडर फॉर एग्जाम्पल सबॉर्डिनेट सप्लीमेंट्री सुपर सुपर मीन्स एक्सट्रीमली सुपर फास्ट सुपर सॉफ्ट ट्रांस ट्रांस इज यूज फॉर क्रॉस ट्रांस सहारा फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रांस डेजर्ट अक्रॉस द डेजर्ट ट्राय मैंने जैसे पहले एक्सप्लेन किया थ्री के लिए यूनी जैसे मैंने पहले एक्सप्लेन किया वन के लिए मोनो जैसे यूज होता है उस तरह से अन इम इन एंड अर इन चारों का मीनिंग जो है ना दैट इज नो नेगेटिव और नॉट अनबिलीवेबल इम्पॉसिबल इन अप्रोप्रिएट इजिस्टेबल फॉर एग्जाम्पल अल्ट्रा अल्ट्रा मीन्स बियॉन्ड और एक्सेसिव अल्ट्रा लाइट अल्ट्रा लाइट फैदर अभी आपने थोड़ी देर पहले किया एक्सरसाइज में अंडर अंडर मीन्स बिलो और बिनीथ अंडर फेड अंडर नरिश्ड एटसेट्रा सो दिस वॉज लिस्ट ऑफ द फिक्स दैट आई प्रोवाइडेड यू आई ट्राई टू गिव यू सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ वर्ड्स हियर I, you, when I was talking about buy, I said bicycle. There was another word that I used. What was that word? If you do not remember, go back. What the word was, and challenge me on that. How it is to be placed here or not? Check for yourself the meaning. By the way, the word was bypass. Do you know the spellings of bypass? Oh, that do not match this one. So that was a completely different prefix. By means side when it is used with y, b, y, by as a prefix when we use it bypass then it becomes side bypass a side pass another route that you can take. So this was the answer. Anyhow, I hope you would have um, understood how these prefixes have different meanings attached to them, and if we just learn these prefixes, you see, if you learn this list of prefixes, maybe these would be these would not be more than two to three dozens of words. So, if you learn them and their meanings, it would immensely add to your vocabulary because you would be able to create a lot of words. by using them and also very uh, difficult words that are seemingly difficult because they have these prefixes attached to them you would be able to understand them and decode the message given through those words for yourself so once you are done with this you can close it from here the word file you can go back to the main slide show where we are working 
After sharing this list of important prefixes, I move on. And you see what here I have. I have a list of important suffixes for you. Just to remind you, suffixes are those words that are add those parts of words actually that are added at the end of a root word. These are groups of words or parts of words that are added at the end of a main word or a root word to give it a different meaning, a modified meaning, a changed meaning, sometimes even an opposite meaning like prefixes. So here I have again provided a list of important suffixes. Let's see what these are. Here I have again followed the same system. Three columns are devised on this word file page. Uh, on the left side column, the leftmost column, you would see the heading suffixes where I have given those groups of words um, that are used as suffixes in English. Um, these are the common suffixes that I have provided here. Mm, then in the central column, I have provided the area of meaning or the meaning um, that helps you understand when we use any of these suffixes, what does actually it mean or how it adds to or modifies the meaning of the root word. And then I have um, in the right side column, the rightmost column, I have uh, at the top given the heading examples. This part is left empty for you to fill. Here, with the help of uh, the learning that you would do through the knowledge of suffixes and their meanings, I would like you to do an activity of creating three um, words using these suffixes, each of these suffixes, th three words in each, each part of the column you would write here. So we start the same process again, able and able, both. Both means capable of being. For example, responsible, charitable, and a lot of words actually. I hope you know a lot of words. Ants and ends. A N C E ends or E N C E ends. When you add this as a suffix, it means state, condition, or quality. For example, from confident, confidence, action and shun, condition or the act. Can you think of some word for this? For example, from translate, translation, dumb, d-o-m, dom, state, condition or dignity or office. This is what it refers to. For example, from the word free, the state of being free would be freedom double e the object or receiver of action they say for example if you are working on a project and there is somebody who supervises you from the word supervise the word supervisor o r hum abhi aage dekhenge supervisor and then supervisee the one who uh, is the 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 giver of action the provider of action is with o r or e r on the other hand when uh, double e is used as a suffix it means it refers to the object or the receiver of the action so supervisee means the one who is being supervised or who receives supervision i hope i am clear n e n N when it is added as a suffix, it means pertaining to, or it means of the nature. For example, strength say strengthen, or er. For example, um, with the work, with the word um, work, when we add er, it becomes the one who does the work. Worker, work, the noun when er is added. It becomes the word that shows the one who does that work. So work, worker, register. Okay, a very different one. Registrar. So you see, this is where the rule varies. Maybe you would come across some other words like that again. But as far as er is concerned, can you think of a few more words? that are exceptions or that are regular. For example, the regular ones, stop, stopper, 
Again, there is some change. P is doubled. You need to notice that. But the meaning retains stop means to the the verb stop and when er is added after another p by doubling the p the consonant at the end what happens stopper one who stops ful full dash full full of or characterized by acha here at this point i would like to mention ke f u double l full is the only um possibility of the use of full with double l jiska matlab hota hai bhara hua hona however the other possibilities when full is used as um i would say as a suffix actually it is used as f u l please notice the spelling so for example plentiful handful etc i c or i c a l scientific superficial i o u s o u s full of of the nature conscious cautious cautious eyes or eyes i s c or i z d to make like of affect with summarize criticize analyze here you also need to be careful about the um, british and the american spellings uh, uh, i would like you to check in a dictionary what are the spellings of for example summarize or criticize um, in the british and in the american english ish ish to form adjectives from nouns for example childish girlish to girl se child se noun se adjective bana dete hain which means like that noun childish like a child girlish like a girl ism ism or ist ist action or practice state or condition patriotism patriot se patriotism the action or the practice or the state or the condition of being patriotic less lose from without worthless for example that does not have worth ly like kindly like being kind ness state or condition kindness state of being kind ship condition skill or character internship the condition of being an intern or interny s or es when they are used they are used for plurals for example girl girls boy boys or es ke liye kya hoga hundreds of words wishes okay ed as a suffix when it is used it shows past tense verb we use it to make second form of the or the third form of the verb for example work worked worked ing regular um, verb forms present participle ke liye hum banate hain working eating er is used for comparative for example soft softer in the same way softest ye bhi comparative ke liye hai aur superlative mein use hota hai ment m e n t ment action or process excitement excite to be excited excite se excitement which means the process or the action of being excited so um we we have two more here i t y n t y state of something sovereignty for example from sovereign sovereignty i v e a t i v e or i t i v e adjective form of a noun for example attract attractive initiate initiative so 
this was the list of the words that I provided you here in terms of uh, groups that of words that are used as suffixes and the meanings or the areas of meanings are provided here. Here I have left spaces blank. I want you to fill in three words for each of these suffixes as a practice for yourself. Please try to do this because the practice is um, something that would uh, enable you learn these and retain these suffixes for your use in future. With this, we close this word file and go back to our um, regular PowerPoint. Before we close today's session, I have a quick um, activity based on um, prefixes and suffixes for you here. Circle the best available answer for each of the following. This newspaper is a bi-weekly. Now, when you know the meanings, you have done it. The newspaper is published once a week, published three times a week, or published twice a week. Check the um, knowledge that you have in uh, stored in your vocabulary fund and mark the correct option. Moving on to the next one. This medicine is a nasal discongestion. Congestant. Disc, uh, this medicine is a nasal decongestant. Decongestant means look at the the con the prefix that is given D. Decongestant. Tent and ant at the end is given as a suffix, whereas D is given as a prefix. If you know the meanings of these, you would be able to guess. The medicine helps reduce nasal congestion or option B, the medicine causes nasal congestion or option C, the medicine makes your nose bigger. Tick the right option and move on to the third one. The third um, question is that shopping bag is reusable. What um, about these three options? Option A, throw the shopping bag away. We won't need it again. Option B, don't throw away the bag because we can use it again. And option C, if you throw the shopping bag away, we can't use it again. Number four, I'm sorry, I misread the notice and therefore misunderstood the message. I misread and misunderstood are the words that have prefixes attached to them. What are the options in terms of correct meaning? Number one, did not read the notice correctly and therefore did not understand correctly. Option B says, read the notice, sorry, read the notice and understood the message correctly. Option C says, did not read the notice and therefore did not understand the message. So tick the option that you think is correct. With this, I move on to the fifth and the last part of this activity that is we usually do not publish articles we don't preview here the word preview has the um, prefix pre so look at the options in terms of correct answer option a we usually read articles before publication we do not read articles after publication and option three says we read articles the day we publish them mark the one that you think is correct. The next slide has two more such um, questions for you. Reforestation will help to restore our environment. The words that I have given in, um, in capital, reforestation and restore, they have prefixes and suffixes used in them. Restore has a prefix D. Reforestation has um, Asian, A-T-I-O-N as a suffix and re as a prefix look at the possibility of options. Option A is planting trees again will replenish our environment. Cutting down trees will further help to worsen the environment. And option C says forests should be cut to improve the worsening environmental pollution. Number seven. Number seven states deforestation will cause environmental depletion deforestation the word is um, compare it with reforestation so again a prefix and a suffix is used in depletion only a prefix is used as d and ion is used as a 
suffix. There are three options uh, for the possibility of right answer. Number one, A me it means planting trees will help our environment from depletion. Means cutting down trees will cause further environmental depletion. And option C says means too many forests will cause further environment depletion. Well, I don't have these solved here for you. So what I can do quickly is I take you back to the first slide of this activity. Let, let's see which ones are correct. This newspaper is a bi-weekly. Twice a week option C is correct. This medicine is a nasal decongestant. Nasal decongestant. So the medicine helps to reduce nasal congestion. It decongests. It removes congestion. So A, uh, A option is correct. B and C are incorrect. That shopping bag is reusable. Which means reusable. Able means possibility. Use and then re again. So it can be used again. Option B, don't throw away the shopping bag because we can use it again. I am sorry, I misread the notice and therefore misunderstood the message. Misread. Miss means wrong, incorrect. Misread means read, incorrect. Therefore misunderstood. That is why understood it, incorrect. So the option um, did not read the notice correctly and therefore did not understand correctly. Option A is correct. The rest of the two options are not. I think in the same way you can check yourself on option on uh, number 5 where we usually do not publish articles, we do not preview. So we usually read articles before publication preview, view them before. Reforestation will help to restore our environment. Reforestation to make forests again. It will restore, will store again, will bring again. So planting trees again will replenish our environment. Option A is correct. Deforestation, putting end to forestation will cause environmental depletion. So means planting trees will help our environment for depletion means cutting down trees will cause further environmental depletion or it means too, uh, too many forests will cause further environmental depletion the option b is clearly the correct option which means deforestation cutting the trees down will cause further environment depletion with this we move on to the next slide and actually I am moving towards the conclusions of today's session um, on uh, vocabulary and building vocabulary I would say a learner's lack of existing vocabulary knowledge also acts as an impediment. One of the quickest ways to increase our vocabulary is to build on existing knowledge. This could refer to background information or understanding familiar parts of our words such as a prefix and suffix. So at this point I am concluding actually how prefixes and suffixes can be a big support in improving and in building our vocabulary. Already the words that we have, the words we know, if we know the prefixes and suffixes by using these prefixes and suffixes at the beginning or at the end of these words, actually we create and we can create uh, far um, more number of words than we would generally think about. So this is not an uh, not only an easy way but also it um, enables you to deal with the seemingly difficult items of vocabulary that are most of the times created by the writers by using suffixes and prefixes. Uh, in this activity that we did with reference to um, the use of prefixes and suffixes you would have noticed that at a time um, a suffix or a pref and a prefix can be used with a word in the same way more than one prefixes and more than one suffixes can also be used with one word um, for example decentralization to create you see um, words that apparently seem far more complicated but actually if we know the difference in the root word and if we can identify the prefixes and the suffixes we can handle them very easily.
Well, students, here I have provided a list of references on these slides for you that I have used for uh, referring to the work of different people and activities. Um, if you can lay hand, you can use these books uh, further and you can go to these websites if you are interested to explore more. Before I really close today's lesson, I would quickly give you a review of today's lesson. In today's lesson, we talked about vocabulary building. We started with what is vocabulary and what is vocabulary building. I established our own linguistic context in relation to vocabulary building um, for the Pakistani students, especially when it comes to vocabulary building. Um, in English language, that is, of course, not our first language or our mother tongue. I established the importance of vocabulary building in academic lives of learners and students. And I talked about teaching learning vocabulary issues and their place in curriculum. With this, the theoretical part was covered. And then I moved on to the more practical part that was how to build vocabulary. In order to address the um, important areas and techniques that can be used for developing vocabulary, mainly in this session, I dealt with the use of prefixes and suffixes. I started with explaining what is a prefix, what is a suffix, and what is a root. Then I gave you some exercises. I um, shared with you some worksheets as well and um, shared a common list of prefixes as well as a list of common suffixes with their um, areas of meanings so that if you could learn them and if you could retain them in your memory, they would help you create a lot of new vocabulary items as well as to understand and comprehend those difficult vocabulary items in your reading when you come across them. This was the review of today's lesson. The next session will be part two of vocabulary building lesson in which we would see other possibilities of how to build vocabulary. By that time, do some practice on prefixes and suffixes that would really help you. Thank you very much.